Welcome back to part two of how an IPO works here on Carlisle Speaks Wall Street. And we are now looking at the money. Show me the money. So, again, a quick review. The whole process of the IPO or purpose of the IPO is to raise money. So we have a company, Carlisle Enterprises, that's looking to raise some money rather than taking out a loan. They have chosen to go public by going public. They are sharing ownership of the company and they are raising money. So that is what we have to consider here. Okay, so first of all, before this process actually goes public, the biggest and most important part of this process actually occurs. And this is the part where Carlisle Enterprises gets their intention, which is to raise the $10 million, ideally. So what happens is the investment banks that are involved in this syndicate, so you have a syndicate of banks that are involved in this whole process, they are going to agree upon a price at which they're going to do a transaction. So basically, Carl Enterprises is going to get agreements from these investment banks from them to actually purchase the shares at this agreed upon price. So in this particular case, we agreed upon $1. So what's going to happen now is you have those agreements and those shares are going to be sold for the IPO to the investment banks for that price. That's the price they agreed upon. Now that price is going to be based on, again, market conditions, based on the dog and pony show results. They went out on, on the road show promoting this IPO all over the place, trying to get interest, and based on the feedback, they're going to determine that price. But this price is catering to the investment banking community as opposed to the market price, which is going to come much later. And I think the public, a lot of people who are not in the industry have a little bit of a misconception or a large misconception between the market value of an IPO versus the investment banking value uh, in, in, the, in the primary market, which is what we're talking about here. So all parties involved de 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 decided on the $1. So once that's decided, you're also going to have the investment banks have their own clients, right? So they are going to be promoting the IPO to their clients. Hey, uh, you know, Carl Enterprise is going to go public and we're, we're in on the deal. So uh, would you like to get an IPO? Um, I'm telling you, man, we looked at the numbers on this company and it's looking really good. Uh, I'm expecting this thing to, to probably go up to at least $5. Um, you know, I, I, I would like you to hold on to this a little bit longer than that. But, I mean, hey, you know, if you want to, if you're looking to make a quick profit, I mean, I'm pretty much guaranteeing you're probably going to make at least $5 per share uh, in the first day at least. So whatever it is, they're going to put their pitch on their, on their clients. So the investment in banks, here's one thing you have to consider. The investment banks are going to agree to purchase this large volume of shares. In this case, we're talking about 10 million shares. They are agreeing to buy this thing for this new issue, which has not been traded yet. We have no idea what the market perceptions are going to be. I shouldn't say that because the market analysts would disagree with me because they have done their research and they've done all the numbers and mathematics. But regardless, these are just estimates. Only the market truly knows what the market is willing to pay for this new security. So what if the analysts were wrong? They think it's going to go up to $5 within the first couple of days or the first day. What if they're wrong? Right? So the investment banks have to instill confidence in their clients because why is investment bank going to buy these shares? Why does anyone buy any shares of anything? You buy shares of stock with intention of getting gains. You want to profit you're expecting the price to go up in the future. So that's going to be the expectation of the investment banks, of course, who get a sweet deal potentially. I mean, they're getting it for a dollar. When the market opens, it may go up to $10, $20, who knows? 
So they, they, they stand to gain a lot of money. And then they can offer to their, their, their clients, not just, not just any clients. These are going to be high volume clients, high net worth clients. You know, these are the ones that they're going to offer this to. So there's a lot of money to be made here for the insiders in the primary market. But what's going to happen in terms of when the money starts changing hands first is going to be the investment banks. Remember, they already agreed to buy all these shares, the 10 million shares. So they're going to make that happen. So they're going to actually purchase the 10 million shares. So at this point in time, Carlisle Enterprises is now $10 million richer because they have successfully sold to these in investment banks, the syndicate, all these shares. And now, once that is done, these shares will be put, put out into the open market. So this is where the public comes in. So you have these 10, 10 million shares which are in the hands of these investment banks. And for the IPO, when the, uh, the, the IPO goes on the, first, on the first day of trading, that's going to now be sold to the open market to the public. Now here's where it gets a little potentially a little tricky where people miss out on some of the details or don't understand about some of these details. So if this thing was sold for IPO $1 and this is would have been publicized in the news, oh Carl Enterprises uh, set to open at one, or not open, they say IPO price of $1 or whatever. People think oh it's going to sell for a dollar. Oh man, it's surely going to go higher than that and if, if it's $1 and it goes up to 5 oh man I'll be so rich. Right. Then the market opens at $10. What exactly happens there? Well, what happens is, um, just like any other, you know, this is how the stock market works. It's an auction-based market, right? So what's going to happen is, again, the $1 was determined based on the investor investment banking demand. That's that kind of expectation of how much they would pay for it, how much they're willing to pay for it. But now we're talking about public now. The public's going to be involved in it. So the price is going to be based on how much they're willing to pay for it. So who raises the price from $1 to $10 at the open first day of trading for this IPO? The public does. The public does that. The market does that. Because how does anyone get any of these shares once it goes on the public market? How do they get any? How does anyone get any, even a single share? You get it by bidding. It's an auction. So if I go and I bid $1 for a share of Carla Enterprises on the IPO date, I can pretty much guarantee you I'm probably not going to get that execution. No one's going to sell me for a dollar because the demand is going to warrant that it's probably worth more than a dollar. So here's what happens. I go and I put my order in. I want to buy one share for a dollar. The guy next to me puts in an order for one share at $5. And then another guy puts another order in for uh puts another order in for six dollars wants to buy a share for six dollars who do you think is going to get the uh, going to get the shares me for a dollar nope next guy for five nope highest bidder it's an auction that's how it works highest bidder gets it so if the demand is ridiculously high maybe it goes up to twenty dollars who knows the price is going to be based on what people are willing to pay for it point blank there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So that is how you can go from $1 to $5. Now keep in mind, some people may think that they, you know, oh, I missed out. I couldn't get in on the, on the thing. It, it went from $1 to $5 before I could get my order in. Now, while that may be true on a certain extent in terms of trying to get your order in with all these, you know, big banks and, you know, just, and you just want to get a 500 share order or something ridiculous, that's going to be really hard. However, that jump of the price from $1 to $5, that's not a trading jump. It didn't go $1, $150, $150, $160, $170. I mean, in the bidding process, perhaps, but in the actual trading activity, the trading part of it, there was no price increases. You literally went from $1 to the very first public trade of $5, $10, whatever it is. So just to just to just to visualize, just to, you know, this is super simple, but you know, so one dollar was the IPO price, right? Let's make this currency here. I just want you guys to see this. So one dollar, that was the that's the IPO price, right? Then what happens is people 
people want to start bidding on this. So you have people that they want to buy the IPO, right? So this is the this is the this is the bid bidding activity, right? So one guy says, uh, you know, I'll pay two dollars for it. He says, I'll pay three dollars for it. These are different people. One guy says, I'll pay four. Screw you guys. I'll pay ten dollars for it. So what happens now? So these are all the bids. And here you have the investment bank, it's called IB, who have the shares. So whatever, they, they have, uh, let's just say everyone wants to buy one share. So they have one share. One share that they bought for the IPO, right? This guy says he is going to pay $2, $2. Screw you, I got another guy willing to pay more. $3, forget you. $4, forget you. $10. Sure, you are the highest bidder, and I'm trying to get the highest amount of money for this uh, as possible. So you have $20, so guess what? I'm going to give you one share for $10. So guess what? The IPO has officially opened at $10 because that was the highest bid that was on the floor at the time of the open. So that is how you get from $1 to $10. And keep in mind, again, these were not transactions. These were simply bids, just like an auction. Again, you have to think about the market as eBay. eBay is a very, I'm just telling you, man, eBay is a very, very good example if you're trying to understand how the market works. You can go on eBay right now and you can bid all you want, but nothing happens until the highest bidder makes his bid and, and you, know, you know, the final transaction is a, it occurs. All these other people that I've highlighted here, you are irrelevant. You failed to bid high enough. You didn't want it enough. It's whoever wants it the most, whoever's going to get it. But unfortunately, because they want it the most, they're going to actually pay the most, and that's going to set the price. That is a transaction price based on the highest bidder. All right? So now let's look at how the money changes hands, because this is very important. Because we want to see a separation between Carlyle Enterprises and the investors and the open market. All right, and you could consider this whole secondary market out here one and the same. Investors and other investors could be one and the same because the initial investors who initially have the shares, um, they can be selling to other initial investors. In terms of these initial investors could be the first ones who, well, they, they're going to be the first ones who, who buy the shares. They can also be the first ones to sell the shares so they can trade amongst themselves as well as other people who weren't involved at all in the initial process, they can get involved. But look at how the money changes hands. Very important for you to look at this. So Carlyle Enterprises, right? You want to make $10 million. So you open up 10, 10 million shares. The agreed upon price is a dollar, right? First thing that happens is you sell those 10 million shares to the investment banks. Investment banks now have 10 million shares. Usually, you're talking about 10 to 15 percent ownership of the company. So keep in mind that this is not a, this does not represent a total ownership in a company at all. There'd be a lot more potential shares, which means you also have the CEO and management and people in the company that have shares of the company as well, right? So the shares that go out to the public are not again the total. They could be 10 to 15 percent of the total uh, ownership of the company. So this goes out. Now the investment banks have these 10 million shares. They can give it out to their, their, their special clients, do whatever they want with it. This all happened for a dollar per share. Now money went from the investors, they got to pay, right? So the money goes from the investors to Carlyle Enterprises. So now Carlyle Enterprises have 10, has $10 million in the bank. This was the whole point of this whole process. They wanted the $10 million. They now have it from the get-go. Now what happens? The investors, investment banks, can now sell these shares on the open market. Now, like we said, the price can go up uh, significantly. So the price here could be $10. They bought it for a dollar, now they're selling it for potentially $10, right? But bottom line is they can sell these shares to the open markets. So now you have these 10 million shares out in the market, back and forth, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. Um, so once they sell these shares, obviously the money is going to go back and forth within the market. But here's a point to keep in mind. The money at Carlyle Enterprises does not change. It is not affected by all this trading activity. They just get the one transaction, the initial transaction, and then that's it. However, remember, the management have shares in the company as well. So the performance of the stock is going to affect them on a personal level. 